Hi everybody, InfoGuru Shop here. I uh, just wanted to do a quick video on the world of advertising in October 2020. And as you can see on the screen here, it says that the from the Business Insider, the pandemic hits the advertising account review. Scary stuff, okay? The pandemic hits the advertising account review. And I'm going to go through um, a few articles here just to look at the world of advertising online and offline. And um, as we can see by this article, it says, The advertising world was once known for its costly face-to-face -face pitches, the high-end commercial shoots, and in-person networking events, much of which has been upended by the pandemic. And it's interesting, you know, I thought this paragraph was really interesting because it gives great insight to um, advertising models of old and we'll get into the advertising models of, of, of new and also obviously the, the interruptions and upending by the COVID coronavirus pandemic worldwide, online and offline. And again, it says the advertising world was once known for its costly face to face pitches, the high end commercial shoots, and in person networking events. And I thought that the in person networking events was really interesting because. You know, for decades, um, it's always been about trade shows and exhibitions, um, meeting face to face uh, at events, um, and always networking, passing your business card. And absolutely, when it comes to coronavirus and the pandemic of COVID nineteen, it's completely taken that industry right out. You know, I mean, who wants to go to a trade show now? Uh, we've got social distance shows to social sorry distancing um and restrictions on lockdown and the uk in england has just extended the lockdown period to sort of 2021 sometime in october um and you know around the world it, it, it's it's different countries are, are, re are reacting differently but generally everyone's on pretty much a lockdown worldwide and the, the article goes on to say add a less visible part of the ad business to that list the account review electronics giant samsung began a review of its u.s ad buy business earlier this summer this is 2020 but it's since cancelled it in response to the economic economic effects of the pandemic according to sources and it says the account was worth about 845 million based on Samsung's US ad spending last year. Now, if you just take that one account, which is worth 845 million, then you can see that, you know, really substantially worldwide, the world of advertising is losing definitely multi-millions into probably I would say I'm not sure if it's going to hit over the, the billion mark but maybe it will but at the same time if you look at um, e-commerce and, 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 and look at how Tesco and and you know and online stores like Iceland and uh, uh, basically and Amazon definitely Amazon is an indicator a big huge indicator of what's happening online and online deliveries is is really really taken off so in one sense advertising um, even though delivery is not necessarily advertising but it's just showing the shift the, di the digital shift or the multi-channel um, multimedia shift and obviously you know delivery takes on board website e-commerce um you know smartphone mobile ordering systems etc etc you know use of apps and, and that's all digital so that comes into the actual advertising um 
channels. And it says here, many of the shifts are expected to endure. Data will likely take on a bigger role as marketers want to know their campaigns are working in real time. Their campaigns are working in real time. I'll say it again. Their campaigns are working in real time. And, and this is where Google Analytics comes in, um, AH, REF, and you know, and other you know, great analytic softwares where you can you know, so really monitor what's happening in real time. And, and this is the big thing. The, world, the words real time are important. You know that for advertising campaigns for you know and multi multi channel is important i think that's still a, a massive growing area because not every website just having a website online does not mean that your website is global in order for a website to be global there's lots of things that have to be done um in you know with country listings and city listings and you know, town listings and state listings, you know, galore in order for you to really be global. And also you've got to be in the search engines for every country and you've got to have the the, the, good, the translation for every uh, con uh, page and every country, you know, and, and this is where you really become international. So you literally can operate from anywhere and be local, national, global, and that's you know that's my speciality is really in 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 um, making websites global, making websites um, multi-channel, multimedia. Um, that's my speciality. Um, <clears throat> now it says here, and advertising will likely continue shifting. Okay, that's an important word. It will continue shifting, and this again, this is Business Insider. It will continue shifting from traditional media to influencer marketing and e-commerce platforms as people spend more on social media and online shopping. I would also say that definitely YouTube is is the king of of I would say um, multimedia uh, advertising and advertising because it's owned by Google. So right across the board when it comes to um, digital advertising, real-time analytics and online um, video advertising, it's definitely YouTube, you know, it's king, okay? So um, it's, I think that definitely digital advertising, mobile advertising is, is top of the list, you know, and, and you can add video advertising to that. It's. I think a lot of people now are more about um, how they use their time. You know, if I'm going to look at an ad, the ad has literally 10 seconds in order to captivate the mind and the attention of the person. Uh, you've got to think when it comes to advertising now, it's a 10 second ad. You know, if you look at TikTok, TikTok's doing what, 30 second um videos and i'm sure youtube is um looking at you know a, a potential tiktok kind of rival um you know you've got big old live that's doing interesting things but it, again big old's different to tiktok but in some ways similar but also there's differentiation differentiation there um so it's it's interesting world that we're living in. It's almost as if that the consumer now is is doesn't have a lot of time in order to make that decision. You're literally looking at ten to thirty seconds, and that's it. You know. So here, just to round off this one, it says people are streaming more video than ever. You see exactly what I just said. People are streaming more video than ever. So what some marketer to do? For some, join them. Um, and it goes on to say that um, Tanya Dua reports that the documentary trend has picked up in the pandemic for key reasons. You can make docs while still following social distancing rules. Brands are going where the eyeballs are streaming video. See, again, everything has to be involved with video. But again, 
that's interesting and it's not as easy as it sounds because video takes a lot of bandwidth when it comes to your website and, and and believe me I know I know about this in the sense that hosting companies you can only put a certain amount of videos on, on your website before you really sort of hit the, the, the threshold when it comes to hosting so you know one has to really be plan carefully and know what you're doing when it comes to you know just putting videos online you know it's, just, it's not as easy as it sounds especially when it comes to streaming video um, and then he also says here short films are suited to brands um, love affair with purpose driven marketing it's interesting short films and that's also a great way for you know anyone in the world to sort of show their creativity you know show your creative creativity use video and there's lots of great video um software out there which some are free you know um you know and and also for instance like audios great like audacity is free yeah and it says here and they might be seen by people who normally skip ads which is interesting again if you make it interesting within the first 10 to 30 seconds anything after that you've got a good potential to influence and grow your 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 followers your your consumers your customers etc etc now let's go on to the next article it says what do ad blockers think about advertising now this is a very interesting article because ad blocking you know advertising world the advertising world frowns upon ad blocking but it's interesting to sort of in this article where it says the perceptions of advertising from ad blocking community i think that you know this article i'm not going to read all of it but it says here um Many might have you believe the reason for someone downloading an ad blocker is because they hate all forms of, of, of advertising. Well, this isn't actually the case. And it's important this, understood, this is understood by the advertising and publish, publishing communities alike. It says, last year we conducted research to understand attitudes, attitudes amongst online online users towards advertising and the use of ad blocking for those who haven't seen our findings the results might surprise you nearly three quarters three quarters of ad blocking users say the primary reason for downloading an ad blocker is because they don't don't want to see invasive forms of advertising during their online experience which is interesting okay now you, i'm going to put all the links below on all these articles so that you can read them in your own time and gain further um understanding um and knowledge of what's going on it's interesting here because they're saying that they don't want to see invasive forms of advertising in other words if i'm watching a video um, even on YouTube, <laughs> and you get those ads, you get those ads right in the middle of it, which I know obviously YouTube has to do that in order to keep, um, you know, to earn, you know, their, 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 their income and revenue, and also share their income and revenue with their, their YouTubers on, on, on YouTube. At the same time, this article is interesting because you've got to do it in a way where it's not. Um, intruding upon what the person's watching but you know again it's not just about YouTube it's, it, it's something that every website has to think about and every advertising campaign needs to think about and it's and I think that you know it, this is an interesting area and I don't think that m there's really any technology out there yet that can bridge that kind of um, gap or, um, well, I should say, is um, that concern, okay? If you can bridge that concern, you've really got 
millions of people that's downloading um, ad blockers worldwide. So that's that's an interesting area for advertising companies and advertising campaigns and, and marketers to look at and, and, and try and see if they can um, leverage that community. Okay. Um, privacy concerns also. He says we now live in a post Cambridge analytic Analytica world and users are highly aware of how adverts track their online behavior using their information to serve adverts which are considered more relevant to them now I'm not going to go into all this but if you look at that is also a concern privacy is a big concern which a lot of even the online giants of the online world have you know obviously they 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 can't take on privacy, you know, fully because they want to, they need that data and that information in order to sell to advertisers so they can earn money from it. So when people talk about Facebook being free and it's, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter, it's free and I'm using Facebook. Well, guess what? Facebook's literally just, just selling you. Okay. So that, to me, that's, I call that digital slavery. You know, why would you want to post all your content online for free to be sold by the digital slave master and you are nothing? You are nothing from it. You know, imagine you, you all look, think of all the photos you've posted for years online and all that information you've given to Facebook and, and what have you earned from Facebook? What have you earned from it? Yeah, think about it, okay? Now, this is an interesting one, and I'm going to end on this article. It says, global golden age of radio ends as advertising world tunes out. Very interesting. So radio is almost like disappearing, if not disappeared, uh, because podcasts are in now, and, um, and video, people's got more access to video software, you know, and that sort of thing. They can even create their own radio stations online. And, um, you know, I think, like I said, podcast is a huge, huge, huge um, area and very interesting area. And, and, and even on YouTube, when you listen to the podcast of, say, Mike Tyson, it's interesting. You know, um, you know, I just I think when you you can get a lot out of a podcast because you can learn a lot from podcasting. OK. So this is an interesting art, um, diagram here or chart, and it says your ad here, your your ad here, and it's got radio, you know, and it, you remember your cassette. This looks like a cassette face down here, and it's got the speakers on each side, you know, and I find that really interesting because now we don't even need the a radio physical. We don't need that physical radio now. It's almost you've got everything on it on a smartphone, you know, or an app very interesting world we live in and it says the web of walkways through london's underground stations tell their own story of the pandemic the billboards of at Ox oxford circus and victoria station were once filled with adverts for luxury fashion perfume and tourist attractions okay um it's just an interesting world that we're living in very interesting world um and then there's an article here about the trade desk digital advertising beyond the walled gardens i'll put that link down below and it says here which i think is interesting when you talk about the world of advertising it says global digital ad spend is expected to reach 333 billion in 2020 i want to read that again global digital ad spend is expected to reach 333 billion in 2020. So when it comes to digital advertising and the global digital ad spend, that's humongous. A quarter of a over a quarter of a trillion US dollars. 333 billion in just 2020. So that's going to grow. That's why you've got Facebook and Google, you know, uh, you know, the, the giants and Amazon really just controlling most of that. That's huge amount of, of money. It'd be nice if everybody in the world could kind of, you know, get 
rewarded as they help these giants because without you know free content what they call freemium and people posting up videos to youtube and people posting content you know which you know videos are content and posting content to facebook you know it's time that you know they get they get some some reward it did, you know, this thing is like if you've done 10 years online you've just posted 10 years of information and content online and someone's earning from all of that okay you know because it's hard to not to be online and earn any kind of money without having to deal with these giants so you know they need to sort of you know look at sort of rewarding you know people who use their platforms that so they can eat they can live they can pay their bills and do, you know enjoy what they do but anyway this article is interesting i'm going to put the link down below because it's it, it says the trade desk platform is programmatic you know, it's a new kind of platform leveraging artificial intelligence and big data to automate the ad buying process. And it says, despite strong competition from the market leaders. So I'm not just, you know, dogging anybody out. I'm actually saying what's fact and what's real. And a lot of companies need to understand this where, you know, if even with companies and their advertising campaigns and budgets, you need to understand how these how to use these budgets. Don't just throw money at the giants and you're not getting anything back for it. it there's a strategy to it. You've got to understand um, website strategy, digital strategy, e-commerce strategy. They're all different strategies. Social media strategy is, again, a different strategy. The way you even do social media on LinkedIn or YouTube or Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat are all different strategies different strategies now it says here and I'm closing now despite strong competition from the market leaders Amazon Google and Facebook right the trade desk is growing quickly and appears to be taking market share all right so they knew into this and it's very very interesting article it says a trade desk is a buy for what long-term investors now I want to actually just say this I want you to look at this word long term because when it comes to advertising online the amount of companies over you know 10 years that I've been speaking to I mean, I'm talking big clients you know um, one example was well, anyway I'm I'm not gonna call names but say t let's take Brantano shoes let's just take one Brantano shoes and I had a meeting with Brantano shoes probably about we're talking two probably two three years ago and with the marketing director at the time big office you know you know sort of headquarters all that kind of stuff and at the time before Brantano shoes actually went into li liquidation anyway you know I said to them as big as you are you need to think like Amazon do you really need all of these high street locations and these positions well cut a long story short they disagreed with what i had to say okay so obviously i didn't get the the, the position of, of consultancy whatever but where is brand tennis shoes now they're out of business had they listened to what i said and if you look at what they most retail um huge retail operations are doing they're now thinking like amazon they're now thinking warehouse central locations and then you have distribution channels wherever you need them uh, subject to demand you know but um again like this this article here it says despite strong competition from the market leaders the leaders amazon google and facebook when really it would be nice if, you know, you can't just have Amazon, Google and Facebook, just three people controlling the whole entire 333 billion worldwide. Everybody, the whole world has to eat. The whole world has to earn money. Businesses need to earn some kind of revenue and we need to live. And it, 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 this is the thing about the online world versus the offline world because we've got two different worlds now, right? It's... You can't destroy this offline world where everybody used to eat and everybody used to trade and do business and no one worried about just having, you know, 
free people controlling everything. Okay? It's now we go online, you've got three people controlling most things. And how is the world of, of all businesses? Think of all the businesses that's registered and trading in the UK and registered and trading in Germany and registered and trading in France and registered and trading in India and registered and trading in Russia and all the other countries, Colombia, Brazil, Cuba. But we, we now all come online and we've got just three people controlling everything. That doesn't make good economic sense. And when it comes to jobs, that's the problem that we're facing right now. That's why no matter what you do and you come online, there's a huge wall and the wall is these three people. But I love them. I love all of them. But I'm just saying... Something has to happen from an economic, political, or whatever point of view in order for everybody to have equal rights and shares and opportunities to these 333 billion in just global digital ad spend. Okay? That's all I'm saying. There's lots of advertising companies all over the world. And there's ways to do it. And it's going to be interesting to see how people go about, you know, the strategy. You know, I'm talking big companies, advertising companies, marketing companies, promotional companies, the film industry, the music industry, retail, e-commerce. It, you know, it, this is why they need to speak with spirit specialists who understand this industry. Who's really, and, 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 and let me just say this because well, we're talking about advertising. Let me just say this. Let me just put it out there because not a lot of people are going to be able to say what I'm, <laughs> what I'm about to say. Listen, this industry, this advertising industry where you talk about technical specialists and freelance specialists. And there's this big debate, you know, almost like the, the, the school of economics. Um, who's for technical, who's for freelance? What I'm, or you know, who, who's a, a Smithsonian, you know, that kind of argument and debate. Listen, they need to understand, hands down, just like martial arts, if or any industry, listen, or boxing. Do you want someone who's a ninja or do you just want someone who does, say, one specialist thing like judo or he may just, another person may do karate or another person may do jiu-jitsu or another person may just be a boxer only. But when it comes to someone who's um, mixed martial arts, they have a combination of everything. Who would you hire? I'm going for the ninja who has the multitasking skills that can literally, there's people out there like me who can do literally what 10 people could do in an agency. I could do it by myself. And guess what? I bet you any money. And anyone wants to put their money down on the table? Let's, let's bet. I don't need the software, the quarter of a million pound software that you're using in your advertising agency. I don't need that. I bet you I could do it on a laptop from a screen from my brain without a quarter of a million pound worth of software and all these different things that you use in your office to look cute so you can get the big BBC contracts and all the ITV contracts and Channel 4 contracts and because you look you know wonderfully like a Rolls Royce okay you get all you're charging them 10 20 30 or 50 thousand pounds a month when really if they, that same even Rolls Royce contract or BMW or Mercedes contract is no different to really um, someone selling flowers or someone doing grocery delivery website. It's no different. It's, we're still in this digital technological e-commerce world. And I come from an automotive background, so I understand the automotive industry, you know, more than most people in, in the automotive industry. You know, that's another video, okay? But 
I'm just going to leave these, these, these links down below. And I just want to say to everyone, look, you know, in this pandemic, just try and hold on. And try and use your creativity. Okay, try and think positive. Because there's still a lot of opportunity, um, I think, worldwide. There's still a lot of opportunity, okay? Right, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And this is the end of the video. Thank you all for listening. And um, have a great, you know, next two months, U.S. election, all these different things. You know, really enjoy your time. Spend time thinking about, use this time wisely to think, brand yourself. What am I going to do where I can use technology and video and multimedia or e-commerce or retail and have my own brand? And there's lots of different opportunities, which I'm going to do a video on that and sort of let's look at what's out there as far as, you know, ways to sort of create um, an income or brand yourself okay thank you for listening appreciate you all if you're on youtube please 